Do you know about the iX5 hydrogen technology? This innovation permits the vehicle's fuel cell production to keep up with the high performance levels. So, it appears that the BMW Group plans for the iX5 hydrogen to compete in the premium automotive market. Bosch announced plans to invest $200 million in U.S. fuel cell production, while Topso revealed plans to invest $267 million in Denmark to build the world's largest SOEC electrolyzer factory. Here's what we know thus far. To begin, what do we know about the house fuel cell production in the BMW. BMW has announced the start of fuel cell production at its Munich Hydrogen Competence Center. BMW's chairman of the Board of Management, Oliver Zips, and Frank Weber, member of the Board of Management responsible for development, attended the ceremony. As previously reported, the iX5 hydrogen concept from last year will enter limited production for testing and demonstration purposes at the end of the year. It will employ a fuel cell technology that, when paired with a high-performance battery, is projected to broaden BMW's portfolio by creating a fresh sort of propulsion system for the premium segment. Hydrogen can help us achieve climate neutrality as a varied energy source. It will also play an increasing role in terms of personal mobility. We believe hydrogen-powered vehicles are technologically poised to complement battery electric vehicles and round out the electric mobility picture, according to Oliver Zips. BMW gave some information about the production process in their news release. The individual fuel cells are obtained from Toyota, validating a previous claim that the two companies are working together to mass-produce new fuel cell vehicles. BMW BMW states that fuel cell systems are built in two stages. Toyota's fuel cells are utilized to construct a fuel cell stack. The fuel cell system is then completed by assembling the remaining components. Both of these processes are performed in-house at BMW Group Plant Landshut. Although the concept featured 168 horsepower, BMW has not revealed any production details for the iX5 hydrogen, 125 kilowatts. Moving on, the 2023 Toyota GR Corolla hot hatch is priced at $36,995. The 2023 Toyota the GR Corolla made its debut in March this year, signifying the Japanese automaker's long-awaited return to the American hot hatch market. The rally-inspired hatchback is finally on the market, and we now have official pricing for the model's first year on the market. The starting price for a 2023 GR Corolla is $36,995. The core trim is the entry-level trim, with over 5,000 units projected in the first year of production in the United States. This car has sports seats and is available in three colors outside. Customers may add the cold weather package, which adds heated front seats and a heated steering wheel to their vehicle. A company package, which includes a navigation system, improved acoustics, and wireless smartphone charging is also available. The GR Corolla circuit is more expensive than the basic model, starting at $43,995. The hot hatch is a one-year-only launch version, available exclusively in 2023. It has a carbon fiber roof, synthetic leather upholstery, a premium audio system, and other features not found on the GR Corolla core. This more pricey and well-equipped edition will be limited to 1,500 units. The Morizo edition is the top-of-the-line GR Corolla for the 2023 model year, and it begins at $50,995. It features higher torque than the other two types and a weight reduction package that eliminates the back seats, rear speakers, rear window regulators, rear wiper blade, and rear wiper motor. There is no information on the production run of the GR Corolla Morizo edition. Following that, facelifted Mercedes Vito seen hiding EQV-inspired fascia. Mercedes-Benz is making progress on the redesign of of its light commercial vehicle fleet. After redesigning the Citan and T-Class, the Stuttgart-based manufacturer moved on to the bigger Vito and its electric EQV counterpart. We saw the former earlier this year, and now we can get a sneak peek at its combustion-powered relative. We have a Vito prototype with camouflage on the front fascia. The disguise appears almost identical to the one shown on the EQV, implying that the visual alterations done to both models will be similar. These should be minor changes, with a slightly revised bumper and maybe a set of new headlights. The grille may also differ from the current model. Surprisingly, a cable connects the cabin to the engine bay. It's most commonly employed by measurement equipment that collects engine data throughout the testing procedure. The test car sits on steelies with little camouflage pieces covering the center caps, but this is most likely only to conceal the Mercedes insignia from observers. It's also worth noting that all four wheels are equipped with disc brakes. Camouflage also covers the upper half of the large hatch at the rear. Aside from freshly styled taillights, we don't expect any changes to the overall design. The bumper will almost certainly be left alone, but keep in mind that this looks like a prototype from the lower trim levels, with bumpers and side mirrors that do not match the color of the body. Surprisingly, the higher brake light is similarly camouflaged. Next up, Ferrari Pro Sangue SUV teaser reveals on September 13th. The Ferrari SUV is just a few days away, as the 
Prancing Horse revealed a teaser image on Twitter that conceals the release date. To view the release date, squint or brighten the image. Maranello's high-riding automobile was first shown four years ago on September 13th when the Italian company unveiled its 2018 to 2022 plan. The Puro Sangue is now open to the public. Ferrari's late response to the Lamborghini Urus was restricted in production, accounting for no more than 20% of the company's total annual sales. Remember that the Puro Sangue has been referred to as an FUV rather than an SUV by the famed supercar maker. Ferrari Utility Vehicle According to spy shots, it will appear to be a big hatchback with little ground clearance. The Puro Sangue will be the first commercially accessible four-door Ferrari, as just seven 456 GT Venice wagons were constructed. According to the few specifications disclosed, it will include air suspension, all-wheel drive, and a base designed to support a hybrid powertrain. The successor of the FF Spiritual GTC4 Lusso will include a dual-clutch automatic transmission as well as a four-seat cockpit with greater space than the previous shooting brakes. The Aston Martin DBX and Bentley Bentega Speed will be tough competitors for the Puro Sangue, as Ferrari arrives fashionably late to the SUV party. McLaren has thus far resisted, though Woking's new CEO is receptive to the notion of a supercar on stilts. Each year, the number of high-end marks that do not offer SUVs decreases. Following that, Gordon Murray is developing hybridization, electrification, and hydrogen. Gordon Murray Automotive, the British supercar manufacturer created in 2017 by former McLaren designer Gordon Murray, is arguably most known for its high-revving 12-cylinder engines. The company's two vehicles, the T50 and T33, are old-school extreme performance machines with naturally aspirated V12 mills. But it appears that the automotive industry's electrification process will not revolve around the manufacturer. No one is immune to hybridization, and Gordon Murray Group CEO Philip Lee recently stated that GMA's research and development team is already working on several electrified projects. The team is actively experimenting with various approaches in order to find the optimal electrification option for the manufacturer. Eventually, we'll all be going electric, Lee recently told Top Gear. I believe that will be the destination, and the reason for this is because law will decide where we all go. GMA is working on it, and we have R&D under Gordon Murray Technologies to examine other sorts of powertrains, all the way to hybridization, electrification, hydrogen, alternative fuels. We're looking at everything to determine where the path is. In reality, Gordon Murray Automotive has already been related to an electric product. It was revealed earlier this summer that the company is working on two electric SUVs that would transform the way we think about range anxiety and vehicle dynamics. These two high-riding EVs will be the brand's first foray into more popular territory, with both models slated to be fairly priced and as light as feasible. However, no detailed technical information is currently available. Finally, in Europe, Hyundai and Kia will be able to use TomTom navigation services. In Europe, Hyundai Motor Group, HMG, has strengthened its relations with TomTom. TomTom will enable maps and real-time traffic data in all Hyundai and Kia vehicles on the old continent, joining Genesis in the process. When Genesis was released last summer, it was the first HMG brand to have TomTom loaded directly out of European showrooms. We are delighted that all Hyundai and Kia drivers in Europe will benefit from TomTom's best-in-class geolocation technology, said Hyung Kwan, vice president and head of HMG's infotainment development group. We trust TomTom to supply extremely accurate map data that boosts our highway driving assist technology, as well as real-time traffic information that assists us in optimizing navigation directions and ETAs. According to the statement, this technology will be standard on millions of Hyundai, Kia, and Genesis automobiles in the coming years. Car makers may push automation further using TomTom's superior maps and real-time traffic technology, allowing Advanced Driver Assistance Systems ADAS, to better predict the road ahead. According to TomTom, the ADAS map gives higher quality road information, such as gradient, lanes, curvature, and speed restrictions, which should increase safety, comfort, and efficiency. TomTom's map data also provides provides correct content for all speed limit types across Europe, assisting with compliance with the Intelligent Speed Assistance ISA law, which went into effect in July 2022. Well, that marks the end of our video today. We hope you enjoyed it. On your way out, make sure to hit that subscribe button, and thanks for watching.